Hi everyone. Today we're going to be installing macOS Mojave on ThinkPad T440p. Now, why would you do this? I don't know, people have their reasons. Maybe you like Apple ecosystem. Maybe you have some apps that only run on Mac. Maybe you just bored and want to do something with your ThinkPad, I don't know. Personally for me, as Luke Smith put it, Linux people like me are divided into two general categories. There are the people who hate Mac, but they really hate Windows. And there are people who uh, hate Windows, but they really, really hate Mac. Now, I definitely belong to the former category. For me personally, Mac OS is much better than Windows if you need to choose the lesser evil because it lets me use the familiar command line tools like Bash Shell or even Fish Shell and whatnot. And it still has a proprietary media production applications like Adobe Premiere, Final Cut, Ableton Live, something that I can't have on Linux. And in general, it's just not as obnoxious as Windows 10. So for me, if I had to pick between Windows and Mac, I would definitely take Mac. I've already made one video about Mac OS where I installed Hackintosh on my XO20, but it was basically my first Hackintosh experience and of course did a lot of mistakes. And in this video, I feel like I'm more prepared to actually do everything correctly. So we'll see how it goes. This video is going to cover all the aspects of installation, from scratch to the completely working system. So if you feel like you're bored, if you're familiar with something, just feel free to skip to relevant parts. I'm going to put timestamps in the description as usual. So first of all, what are we gonna need for this um, project? Of course, laptop, ThinkPad T440p, flash drive, should be at least eight gigabytes, and ethernet connection. It's very important since Wi-Fi is not going to work by default and we will need to download some stuff from the internet. I've been using macOS on this laptop for about two weeks now and I got everything working pretty much fine. There are a couple of gotchas that you need to pay attention to and I'm going to explain everything in this video. So right off the bat, what doesn't work on this machine? First and foremost, Wi-Fi. This laptop has Intel Wi-Fi card by default and Intel cards are not supported by macOS. So yeah, two options here. You can buy Dell DW1560 which costs about 60 euros. What? So not a lot of people will want to do this, I imagine. Or you can buy a USB Wi-Fi adapter. For example, this one, this is TP-Link Nano, and this is what I currently use, and it works just fine with no problems at all. If you decide to go for an internal Wi-Fi card, you will need to do a BIOS mod, which I made a video about. It's kind of tricky to do, but I explained every step in the video that I linked, so it should be fine. So here are some other things that don't currently work in this machine. Docking station audio, VGA since there is no VGA on real MacBooks, sleep and shutdown while docked, card reader doesn't work. Also, if you have T440p with NVIDIA discrete graphics card, this graphics card is not going to work and is going to turn off on boot, but the machine is still gonna run perfectly fine with Intel graphics, so that should be no problem. Okay, so much for the introductions, let's get going with it. So first thing we need to do is to create the installation media. And if you have a Mac handy, like if you can borrow one from your friend, for example, this is pretty easy, but I'm also going to cover it in this video later. However, if you don't have a Mac, this gets a little bit tricky, or at least it used to be tricky until there was this tutorial by r slash Hackintosh to create an internet recovery installation media using Linux or Windows. So using this and this tool called Gib Mac OS, from a guy called CorpNude. Thank you CorpNude a lot for this amazing tool. I hacked together a simple script. Let me just show you. First we have to clone the repository. So basically what the script does is it fetches the latest Gib Mac OS by CorpNude. Then it, um, it fetches a recovery image from the latest Mac OS. In this case it's Mojave 10.14.6 then it, it impacts it using 7-zip. Last but not least, it basically flashes the image to a flash drive. It also checks whether this flash drive is actually connected via USB, just so you don't, you know, casually erase your <laughs> entire root drive or something. So yeah, it partitions the drive, it burns the image, and all you have to do is to install the bootloader, which I'm also going to cover in this video later. So let's run the script right now and create our installation image. The script itself is pretty self-explanatory and it doesn't need any extra knowledge of macOS or Linux or whatever. 
Now you have to press enter. The script is going to unpack the files. Next we need to choose our flash drive. Here you have the LSBLK output. And in my case, the flash drive is dev SDD. Next you need to enter your root password. This is going to unmount all the partitions, then partition the drive. And then it's gonna flash the recovery image onto the flash drive. It's gonna take some time, so go get some tea or coffee. And that's it. The only thing you have to do now is to install the Clover bootloader. Clover is basically the bootloader for Hackintosh. Because of different boot options, kernel extensions and whatnot, Clover folder contents will be different depending on your machine. I uploaded my Clover folder to GitHub, so you can just take a look there. It basically is based on this GitHub repository by Amino. First, let's clone the repository with the Clover folder. Here, as you can see, we have the folder name EFI, and that's what we're gonna need. But first, let's mount our EFI partition. And now let's move the EFI folder to the partition. And that's it. If you use Windows, there is a script that comes with GitMac OS, which does the same thing, but automatically. And now I'm going to show you how to do the same thing on Mac, in case you already have one. <laughs> so first, let's go to the terminal. I have iTerm, but you can use the normal terminal as well. Let me just make the text a little bit bigger. Next thing you type diskutil list. This will help us determine the flash drive letter or digit. In my case, it's disk four. Next, you need to enter the command sudo diskutil raise disk fat32 my volume, all caps, or any other name that is all caps, dev disk four in my case. The disk should be now mounted at uh, volumes. That's it. Now you need to go to the App Store, click on the search bar and enter Mojave View. And next you click on Get. In my case, I already have it, so I'm not gonna do it. After it's downloaded, you need to go to Applications. And as you can see here, there is a file called Install Mac OS Mojave. Next, as per Apple's official instructions on this website, which I'm going to link in the description, of course, you need to enter this command. And this is going to create the installation media. Let's just copy it and paste. You need to replace the my volume thingy with your actual volume name. In my case, it's my volume, all caps. And after you're sure you got everything correctly, you can press enter. And again, this is going to take some time. So grab a coffee, grab a book or any other thing to entertain yourself and be patient. <laughs> One eternity later. So as you can see now, the process is finished, but just like in case of Linux and Windows, we need to put the Clover folder onto the EFI partition. Now, as you can see, the partition that we need to put the Clover folder on is disk 4 s one and we need to mount it. So we need to enter the command sudo diskutil mount dev disk 4 s one as you can see, it's mounted. So now we go to volumes, EFI. As you can see, it's empty. So I'm going to clone the Git repository with my EFI folder. I'm gonna move the EFI folder from the T440P Hackintosh in here. And I'm gonna remove the Hackintosh folder. And that's it. Now we can proceed with the next step. So before turning the laptop on, make sure all the peripherals that you don't need are disconnected just to eliminate any chance of failure. I'm going to disconnect this Wi-Fi adapter and after you're sure that everything that you don't need is disconnected from the laptop, insert the installation media and turn on. Before we actually get started with installation, we need to, we need to edit some BIOS settings. So first, security, security chip, needs to be disabled, like here. Then memory protection, execution prevention should be enabled. Virtualization should be disabled. Anti-theft 
also disabled, secure boot, disabled. Next, we need to go to startup menu and in UEFI legacy boot, you need to choose both, priority UEFI, CSM support, yes. And after you've done that, just exit saving changes. And now we can press F12 to choose our boot media. You need to choose the flash drive that you put installation on, SanDisk Cruiser Blade in my case, and you will see Clover boot screen. But before actually booting Mac OS, we need to enter some boot options. So go in options, here choose uh, dash V. Next go to graphics injector. And for platform ID, you need to choose 0x123456, 7, 8. This will disable any graphics injection and let us actually boot into the installation. And now we can proceed with booting. Almost forgot that we also need to connect our Ethernet cable. There we go. Eventually you should see the gray screen like this and the language choosing dialog. I'm gonna choose English here. Next we need to go to disk utility, choose our target hard drive. In my case it's NT 256 media. Let me just put the camera a little bit closer. So we need to click on a hard drive. In my case, I only have one hard drive. Next, click on Erase and choose APFS, Hackintosh HD. That's it. After that's done, close Disk Utility and then click on Reinstall Mac OS. The installation itself should be pretty straightforward. You just need to click Agree, agree again, and choose the hard drive. As I already mentioned, I only have one. It will warn you if your computer is not connected to power source, but in my case, it's not a problem since I have nine cell battery. If you're worried that your computer might turn off during installation, do connect the power source. The installation itself should take about 11 to 20 minutes and your computer will be rebooted several times. And every time it reboots, you need to put all the boot options that I put the first time dash V and inject into ID, but I'll show you that later, of course. So after your computer reboots the first time, basically you need to go to boot Mac OS install from Hackintosh HD or whatever name you picked. And also go to options, put dash V, that's for verbose. Also go to graphics and once again, choose 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, that's 7, 8. Apparently I can't count. <laughs> after that, just choose Boot Mac OS install from Hackintosh HD and press enter. After your laptop is done booting, you should be greeted with that screen. You know, it's just a normal Mac welcome screen. Skip the Apple ID for now. If you want to log into your Apple ID, you can still do it later. Terms and services, which of course we're not going to read because we're basically violating them right now. So we got through the initial installation, but our work here is far from being complete. First thing we need to do is to download some stuff. Let's go to GitHub, not the B. Here you're going to see my Hackintosh repository. I'm not sure if Mac OS has Git by default, so we're just going to download it. So after you downloaded the archive, go to downloads, click on this folder, it should be unpacked automatically. Remove the flash drive, there it is. Next, go to Launchpad, search for Terminal. As you can see, everything is laggy. That's because we haven't set up the graphics yet properly. And that's why we need to get repository thingy. Let me just make everything bigger. Here, you need to enter disk util list. As you can see, the EFI partition is on disk 0s1. So we need to enter sudo disk util mount dev disk 0s2. S1. 
There we go. So it should appear here. This is the EFI partition of the drive that we installed macOS on. So we need to copy the EFI folder here. If you already have something, just merge them together. So we're good to go here. What we also need to do is go to this Git repository thing again and go to the folder called AudioFix. Then drag the install.sh to the terminal and press enter. It is going to ask for your password, in my case it didn't because I already entered one. Next we need to download a tool called Hacking Tool which is going to help us install some drivers and kernel extensions. Hacking Tool. This is the download link. Just drag it to Applications folder here in Finder. Next, launch it. It's going to say that it can't be opened because it's from an unidentified developer. Don't worry, just go to System Preferences, Security and Privacy, General. You need to click on Lock, enter your password, then click OK here, and click Open anyway. So in Hacking Tool, you need to go to uh, Tools and click on this one, this Lego thingy, the first one. Next, you go to Downloads. Choose the folder that you downloaded from the Git repository. Texts, choose all of them. If you don't have the internal Wi-Fi card, like Dell DW1560, don't choose the um, BRCM ones. These three ones, you won't need them because you don't have the Wi-Fi card. Then select and enter your password again. It's going to show a lot of orange and red lines, but don't worry, it's completely okay. And that's it. After you have a bunch of red lines, that means that you're done. And next we need to reboot our machine. This time you don't need to choose any clever options. You don't need to set platform ID or dash V. You just choose Mac OS from Hackintosh HD and press enter. And as you can see, we're at login screen. We just need to enter our very complicated and difficult password. And there we go. As you can see, the dock is now transparent. So we have the graphics working just fine. The animations are not lagging anymore. Sound control also works since we applied the audio fix. So basically, the installation here is complete. We have a fully working ThinkPad T440P Hackintosh. But there's a couple more things that I want to mention here. If you're using the Alps trackpad, just like I do. And if using the modified Voodoo PS2 controller kernel extension from the repository that I provided, you won't be able to put the brightness down. As you can see, it only goes up and it doesn't really go down. So in this case, you need to download Carabiner Elements. After it's installed, just go to Launchpad and search for Carabiner Elements. There we go. And here you need to basically add one simple modification. Add item from key F4 because we can't use F5 since it's already mapped to brightness up in the driver to Apple top case display brightness decrement. And that's it. One more thing that I would like to mention is that if you use the Synaptics touchpad and not Alps, you won't be able to middle scroll by default. Unfortunately, there is no good or easy way to make the middle button scrolling work on Synaptics, but you can use this app called Smart Scroll. It is unfortunately proprietary and you have to pay for it. But like I said, this is the only way to make the middle button scrolling work with Synaptics touchpads. Now I also want to show you the docking station functionality. Let's just dock it. So yeah, that's basically it. We have a fully working ThinkPad T440P Hackintosh running macOS Mojave. I hope you really enjoyed this guide. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I also want to thank Rehab Man, Corp Nude, r slash Hackintosh, and everyone who's working on Hackintosh and everyone in the community. Of course, this tutorial would not be possible without them. I also want to thank my Patreons, Joseph O, Nero Gamer, and everyone else who supports my channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.